brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's readings we hear a continuation of yesterday's readings, where in the Acts of the Apostles, Paul is speaking his words of farewell to the presbyters of Ephesus. He's going to what he knows will be suffering in Jerusalem, and they are clinging to him in sorrow. Meanwhile, in the Gospel of John and the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus, Jesus continues to will, to plead, that the apostles may be one, his disciples may be one with one another, and with him, as he and the Father and the Spirit are one. Both are prayers of shepherds preparing to leave their flock behind, both going to certain horrible sufferings, and yet neither is concerned with themselves and the sufferings that are to come, but for the well-being of the sheep that they leave behind. Paul specifically speaks of the wolves that he knows that will come and pray on his disciples as he leaves them, and prays that they may not be led astray, not be led to destruction. This is the true prayer of a shepherd. I can speak to myself as a priest, as a, as a pastor of souls, that the, the things that keep you up at night aren't the, the things that could go wrong, the things that might happen that are bad for you, but the concern is for souls. The concern is for those things that can lead people astray, whether overtly, not just the obvious attacks and dangers, but the more insidious, the subtle ones that lead, lead people away from God. That is the true concern. And so these readings are very beautiful in the language that they show the compassion of the shepherds for their flock. I can speak you know, with, with confidence from my years serving, as, serving alongside our, our shepherd, um, that his his concern for the flock is great. Nowadays, whether it's uh, for a pastor of a church, whether for a bishop, for a pope, everyone is quick to be able to list their, their complaints uh, about the way bishops, priests, popes do things, how they would do things differently if they were. And yet, of course, the reality is we, we know, and I, I know from experience, that people can't know the, the pressures and the challenges that, that shepherds in these situations face. And at the end of the day, what is important is that not that they're necessarily always getting everything right, but that their care, first and foremost, is for the good of the sheep. That is the driving force of a shepherd. But the other beautiful part of these words in our readings are the response of the disciples to their shepherds. The disciples, the presbyters at Ephesus, cling to Paul. They don't want to lose him just as the disciples don't want Jesus to leave them. And this speaks powerfully to the attitude we should have for our shepherds. I certainly never cease to ask you to pray for me as pastor here, that I am not to pray for my intentions or the things I want, but to pray that I may be effective, that I may have whatever wisdom, whatever courage, whatever skill, the love, certainly the holiness to do well here. I hope that you pray that for me. We need to pray that for Cardinal DiNardo, for Bishop Schultz, now we've been blessed with a, a new auxiliary bishop yesterday, uh, the news that uh, Bishop-elect Italo del Oro, who's also a wonderful man, I've known him for 20 years, a man with a care for the poor, with a missionary heart. We need to pray for our shepherds. We need to pray for the Holy Father. In fact, we make these prayers in the Eucharistic prayer at every Mass. It's a reason why I always say, in communion with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, George, his auxiliary. We pray because... We are in communion. That is the reality of the church, is our communion is with the shepherds and with the Lord. And while we may disagree, not everyone may be perfect in their human agency, it is this communion that is the sheepfold that keeps us safe. When we're in communion with one another and with the Lord, that is when the Holy Spirit is powerful in protecting us from going astray. My brothers and sisters, for all of differences of opinions, things inside, please let us pray for one another. Please pray for me, pray for our bishops, pray for our Pope, just as we pray for you, and let us pray for one another. For together in the church, that is where we are strong, and the love of God is made with us. May God bless you.